completed the evaluation procedure for a water strip and we have seen that what are the various steps to be taken, what is the various uh, level of data which is required for the purpose. Let's look at the, the various analysis component, what we do with this data, how we can make use of this data which has, which has been collected from the, the border strip or a set of border strips which have been um, used from the, the actual area. To do that, I think it will be quite appropriate if we take a sample example and uh, go through that sample example which will also give us some in-depth um, in details on how the data is recorded, what are the elements of data which we have already um, listed in the previous lecture and then we will go on to the analysis, what type of analysis we perform and how that analysis is useful in our later on design or even uh, for finding out as the manager of the water distribution or as farmer, how effectively you are utilizing the water. This example which has been taken is the result of actual test run which has been uh, performed on the field and some of the, the details, the initial details which are uh, uh, important in terms of knowing some of the, the quantities, these are that the crop is wheat crop on which the test was performed. The root zone depth of uh, this crop is 1.8 meters. Deficit is fifty percent. And the soil, which is in question, is a sandy loam soil. For this soil, it has been found that the available available moisture is under twenty four millimeters per meter depth. Okay. So, if it is 124 millimeters per meter depth, then for 1.8 meters, the amount of moisture will be, this will be 223.2 millimeters, okay, this is per meter depth, 124 millimeters of moisture available or 1.8 is around 223.2 millimeters and if you now find out what is the 50 percent of that is around 112 millimeters. So the management allowed deficit, you can have a deficit of up to 
112 millimeters in that soil and this deficit signifies that if you remain within this deficit level the yield of the crop won't be affected if you go beyond this deficit it means if you let the soil moisture deplete below this level or beyond this level then there will be some impact on the crop yield the other uh, data which is given here is that the SMD the actual soil moisture deficit which was prevailing at that time when the irrigation was done is only 73.6 millimeters okay the other information which is available is the stage of the crop is crop is at flowering stage this initial data which is either observed from the field or is available um, already existing with the organization or the farmer this is the data which is taken from the cylinder input permitted test there are different tests which have been performed in the field this is the first cylinder then at location number 2 there are two more observations so these are the actual observations which have been taken we will just concentrate on uh, this particular part what type of observations have been made and what analysis or what uh, uh, is inferred from those observations you can see here that there is the time in minutes these are the watch uh, the hours which at which the observations have been made 10 55 56 59 in the beginning the interval is much closer because the infiltration rate will be higher and then the difference in time has been noted here so while making the observations you might be observing only this and the depth uh, this is the depth the infiltration in centimeters so these two observation in the column number one and column number four these are the two which have been put and later on then the these have been derived from the, the observed data you have the difference in time and then the cumulative values that after this time how much is the uh, the cumulative time that cumulative time is also written here similarly in the case of depth how much is the depth per interval 6.25 centimeters and the next is uh, 6.5 after um, one minute so in that one minute is 0.25 which is the difference and that this the last column gives the cumulative value of the infiltration so basically these are the the cumulative time and the cumulative infiltration that is what you will need to plot the the data or to analyze the data to find out the infiltration characteristics. Similarly, the other observations have been made and there are two more on this side because in general you will find that these observations are required to account for the variabilities in the, the soil characteristics and also to sometimes to account for the inaccuracies which might you might incur while observing the data then this has been plotted over a log log paper all these four uh, cylinder tests the infiltrometer test data has been plotted and these are the numbers number one number two number three and number four samples which have been taken and that those are 
plotted the time versus cumulative depth. Now you are, you will see that all these are quite different in terms of the scatter. These four different samples are giving quite different values. That is the reason that you will, you will need to arrive at some average value. So, the typical value has been interpolated, thus lower dash time which is uh, given here. Is it visible? This lower dash line is a typical value which is the average value maybe. Right? Now, having computed this average value, you have the, you have the characteristics the infiltration characteristics available with you for that representative area or for that particular field. After that, you will have to go in for the other observations, which are the observations on the, the water movement, how the advance curve and the recession curve will be with respect to a selected stream size. So, in this particular uh, test, the, the various observations which are um, made before you have st started the supply at the upstream end. These are that uh, the border width the border width might be different than what is the the wetted width because there will be the ridges will also have some some slope. So, you will uh, you can note down both the things what is the border width that means the clear width between uh, the two ends of the border and what is the the wetted width in this particular case the wetted width was found to be 7 meter. And then you can also take how this width is changing from one station to the other station when you go in the, the stations which have been installed at those levels how the width is changing. If there is a change in width, you will have to again account for that or take an average width. Then the slope, again you had uh, taken the observations on the elevation points what is the elevation at all those stations and that will provide you the slope and in this particular case the slope is 0.55 percent which has been observed. The selected stream size we had said that we will a stream size, a suitable stream size will be selected and that selected stream size uh, will be used on one strip. On the other two strips, you will have some variation of that stream size, maybe in one slightly lower, in another one uh, slightly more stream size. So, in this particular case, we are only discussing one strip data. In this particular case, the stream size which is used is 33 liters per second and since it is a border strip case, it will be per unit width, per meter uh, width of the, the border. Then the Duration of irrigation can be pre decided or at that time when you it, it again depends on what type of soil you are using and what is the slope. In general, you might uh, if it is a, a light soil, you will stop the water when it reaches around 70 percent of the the length of the border. 
whereas now is the is the other way around if it is a light soil you will let the water spread up to around 90% and if it is heavy soil you will stop the the supply of water when it has the water front has reached around 70% of the the length of the border this is a, a thumb rule basically but you can also vary in this case you can in different uh, segments or in different strips you can use different timings of the the supply of water as the idea is that you should have the minimum surface runoff and since in the case of light soils the infiltrations are higher you will find that if you stop it too early the last bit of the the field might not get any water so is a function of along with the the stream size is also a function of the slope and the soil type in this particular case the irrigation has been done for 88 minutes and the data the other data which has been recorded is again um uh, this is the data which has been will will see you can concentrate on this segment first this is the first segment these forms are pre designed forms which can be used which i was referring to in the last lecture that the pre designed forms can be used which can uh, reduce the the inaccuracies because of the recording of the data so here you can again see that this is the watch as what as the readings have been made and this gives the the at a different statement mean, these are the stations which are 30 meters apart which we have installed on the this particular uh, uh, border strip in this case in this example the border strip is 255 meters long so that you can see here that 0 meters is the first station then the next is 30 0 30 60 90 and this is uh, 1 plus 20 that means 120 meters 150 and so on now what we are recording is that at what time the water reaches each individual station so this is the time when you have started the supply of the water at the next station the water has reached at 59 minutes at the next station it has reached at 11 12 and so on so what you have what you can found in turn is that what is the time taken between the two intervals there is a difference and then the cumulative value also can be recorded now these two data the distance versus the cumulative time or the elapsed time will give you the advance curve okay similarly for the the recession curve you have recorded the data in this particular segment where there is the same thing as this what is the time of start and then after 88 seconds this is the difference uh, at 1219 which is the difference is 88 minutes so after 88 minutes you have supplied stopped the supply of water then you have found out that when the water disappears from this station so it didn't disappear till 27 11 20, 12 27 so that means at 12 27 the water just disappeared so it has taken around 8 minutes for the water to disappear so that is the the lag time that is the time what the water has taken to uh, the the retention storage has taken 8 minutes to disappear from that station and then similarly you find out the time uh, this is the at each station what is the time when the water the the recession uh, uh, part of the water that got disappeared so you have noted on that time against each station and that is how it will give the cumulative value that what is the cumulative value at which you are 
water is getting disappeared. So that will, this and this will give you the recession curve. Okay. And along with that, this is the, uh, this segment is used to, to uh, get the slope. This is the, the reading of the, the elevation with respect to some datum at each of the stations and that will give you the slope of the Having uh, observed these basic data, then the data is plotted and this is a plot of the data, the same data, the way it has been uh, plotted. You can see here that these are the stations. Station number at uh, 0, this is the upstream end and this is the downstream end and the total length is uh, uh, coming up to here, somewhere here and at each station you have used data of the, the accumulative time or the elapsed time and this is the advanced curve, this is the recession curve which has been plotted and these values which have been written, these values are nothing but, these are the, the values of the opportunity time, the difference between this time and this time. So at each level, what is the time at which the water has disappeared, what is the time when the water was available and these are the timings at each station for how long the water was available at those respective stations. Now this gives quite a good uh, picture about what is the, what is the, the time and uh, since you know the time, you can also find out using the characteristics of the soil, how much will be the infiltrated water at these locations. Now there comes a problem when you do not have, uh, on this side you have uh, plotted the surface profile against the readings which have been recorded and sometimes you might find that there is a depression or there might be a hump at some place and that uh, give you the indication whether uh, when, what, what type of problem you can face. So if that is uh, observed somewhere in uh, some other strips, you can try to remove in the next if it is a crop which is already available crop, you might not be able to do anything, but you will be able to associate your reduction in efficiency or the, the relevant efficiency to those absorbed uh, things or uh, those problems which you have absorbed in the data itself. Now using, suppose this data which has been absorbed you use this data to find out how much is the, the depth, infiltrated depth. Let us have a look that we know these are the various, uh, uh, if we see that we have stations 0, 1, 2, 4, 5. These are the various stations and we have recorded that what is the, the net time for which the water is available at these stations and we have said that we have for, uh, this is in minutes, 96 minutes, 118, 126, 123, 112 minutes. Now, using the average soil characteristics which we have using those uh, infiltrometer tests, we have found out the soil characteristics in terms of that equation y is equal to a t to the power b plus c and using that equation, 
we can find out what is the depth of infiltration in millimeters. Now, the depth of infiltration which we find for the corresponding uh, uh, locations in the present case, this is the These are the actual values which you derive by using that infiltration curve characteristics that this, this much is the depth which can be infiltered depending on the time which you have observed at this location using the actual data. Now here, if I try to take the average depth because in each of these cases, when we have the various stations, we have said that this is our the advance and recession curve. At each one location, we are finding out how much is the the infiltration time, and at each of these locations. We are having a value which is only a single value. So, if we assume that this part is representative of this, this segment, we can always take an average of uh, the previous and this one and that is what is being uh, represented by this segment. So, that way you can, you can take the average and those averages uh, you can note down at this location. And this, this is just trying to reduce the, the impact of discretization. You are taking the individual values. So, if you take the averages, you will get some average value for all these different segments which are 30 meters each. And then, you can take the overall average, the average depth or the total length which is 255 meters comes out to 97.6 millimeters using this data. The average, if you take the average depth, these are the actual depths uh, for, uh, for example, in this particular case, you will find that between uh, this and this, the average will be 80, between this and this will be 86.25 and so on. So, if this 80 is representing the first 30 meters, then you can find out that for the total segment of, for the total length of 255 meters, the average works out to be 97.6 millimeters. And if you take, we are also trying to look at Another, if you see here, we are trying to find out that if the length would have been and, uh, 210 meters only, then what will be the, because in this segment you can see, it is quite obvious that the distribution will be really, really very poor, because the time of infiltration is very low. So, if you go beyond, beyond this segment, up to here, you still have uh, the, these two curves are not uh, trying to converge. The, the opportunity time is still quite reasonable. We will have to check that because we might ultimately find that even this length is not sufficient. You might have to choose a length which is another 30 meters on this side. So, that is where you can make various op various uh, options and let's try to make a option that if we select 210 meters of the border length what will be the the average uh, depth which we'll get using this the the soil typical soil characteristic curve 
which we have uh, assumed or which we have selected from those four samples, you will get a, a depth of 105.7 millimeters. So these two depths are the ones which you are uh, um, getting from the, the data which you have observed. Now, at this juncture, it will be quite worthwhile to check, are these depths, because this depth is totally constrained, this depth which you, have, which you are uh, finding out is totally constrained with the fact that whether the soil properties or the soil characteristic curve which you have obtained is reasonable or not, because the range was so much. If you again have a look on this, the range is too big. So you have to, you have to justify, you have to uh, have a in-depth study of that uh, characteristics, whether the selected characteristics are reasonably representative of the area or not. So to do that, we make a analysis depending on how much volume has been sent to the strip, how much volume, we, we do, do some analysis on the, the basis of the supply of water. We know that we have stream size, which is 33 liters per second, okay. We also know that the wetted width of the border is 7 meter and we also know the time of application. So the width is known, the time of application is known, this is 88 minutes. Using this, if you want to find out what is the volume and convert that volume into the equivalent depth, that depth will be the depth if you use 255 meters length because it will be a function of what length you are using. So if you use 255 meters length, this volume will uh, work out to be 33 liters per second and uh, these are the 88 minutes, seconds divided by the area and this will work out to be 97.6 millimeters. mistake which has been uh, made here and uh, giving you this information. This is not my fault. Uh, this is not 97.6 millimeters. This is a value which is less is 73.2 millimeters. And uh, this is also accordingly this is a value which will be the value which is after the adjustment has been made. So it is observed here at this juncture that because it cannot be, if you look at these values, it uh, cannot be 97.6, the average value. This average value has to be lower and looking at these values also is 60, 42, 17 and there are some higher values. So the average is around 73.2, okay. Now, this this
this depth which works out to be 97.6 is if you try to visualize what is this depth this is the average depth depending on <coughs> the fact that you have uh, depending on how much water has been sent to the the strip how much volume of water has been sent to the strip so your infiltration characteristic curve is giving you a under simulation the this this signifies that the infiltration characteristic curve which you are which you are using is giving a, a under simulation and that needs an adjustment how you adjust that because even if you look at uh, there will be there will be some surface runoff there will be some uh, other losses also this 97.6 is corresponding to uh line here because the minimum which you want to send if you uh, find out what is the what is that come If you look at it, uh, this particular uh, place, the average time. If you look uh, at the typical curve which we have selected, this is the the lower curve which has been selected, and at that curve, you are getting a value of seventy-three point two, which is the average depth. Seventy-three point two. What is the time? The corresponding time is around uh, um, it works out to be around ninety-six minutes. So, if I take a value, the average depth, which is seventy-three point two, which I have found out from here, that this is the average depth which I was getting. If I use this typical curve, which I have found out on the basis of the, the average data, or uh, on the basis of the actual data, I have found out the average curve, and I'm not sure whether that average curve is still representative of the total area or not. To uh, to verify that, I went to the volume basis. I found out that that volume will create how much depth on the average. So in this uh, situation, if I find out that 73.2 depth, how much time it takes to get me the 73.2 depth is around 96 minutes. Now for that 96 minutes. in that 96 minutes i should uh, get a, a depth with respect to the the volume or with respect to the stream size which has been selected i should have got a depth of 97.6 cm so i i take this point to a level which gives me a cumulative depth for the same time Which is equivalent to around ninety-seven point six millimeters. So I shift this curve up, and then I draw a line parallel to the previous typical curve. That is how I make the adjustment. I have kept the same slope, but I have changed. I have shifted. I have adjusted the the 
the infiltration rate in such a manner that for the same time I get a value at least which is equal to the value which I spread using that uh, average stream size and uh, that minimum that average value of depth I should get from that infiltration curve which should be the representative curve. Having got this adjusted uh, curve, now I, I try to verify that and I find out how much is the, or in other words, I get a new curve which gives me a, analyzing this, uh, this particular uh, adjusted curve, I get a new set of values which I analyze for A, B and C and use that curve in turn to find out how much is the, how much will be the, the depth for these infiltration opportunity times, okay. So that is what I, I do here and I find out what is the chain depth, I will write at this level. The chain depth in this particular case is 95.97.5. At this station, it will be 112.5 instead of 85, and then I will have 117.5, 117.5, 110 millimeters, 102 millimeters. And uh, 92.5, 77.5, and so on. So, these values are the adjusted values or the revised values with respect to the new characteristics, and this I analyze again to find out what is the average depth now the adjusted average depth, if I take the total length of 255 meters, works out to be 97.6 millimeters, okay, which is the same now, which is the same as what I have found from the the criteria of the stream size by analyzing the volume which has been put onto the, the total length. At the same time, if I decide to reduce the length, because I know the last segment is quite poorly represented, or the, the infiltration opportunity time is very low in that, so if I decide to take only 210 meters of the length, this quantity works out to be 105.7 millimeters. Now, this is important because you have seen that how the whole competition changes. So, either you have to have a lot of those infiltration uh, uh, tests made and take average which will be representative of the total, but still it will be much better if you can uh, verify those characteristics because these characteristics are varying so much in the, uh, the location of the, the test or even otherwise the soil characteristics are so much variable that when you are doing the point test, infiltrometer uh, test is a point test, in fact you are using a a very small area of the total area, which might not be representative and uh, there can be some other inaccuracies also because when you are using the infiltrometer test, we have seen that even if you have the double cylinder, the double, uh, uh, that uh, two cylinders you are using, but still there can be some literal dispersion. So it can give some values which are not always the representative values. So having the, you can use the actual test to find out what are the, the general characteristics, what shape it takes, what slope it takes. That slope might 
be a representative slope because the slope will change when you go from one type of soil to another type of soil. So that is what is reflecting the rate of uh, change of infiltration. And once you have done that, then you must at least verify how much is the variation uh, or whether that, that uh, infiltration characteristic uh, which you have arrived at, is it really representative or not? And that is how we do it. That is what we have just gone through. Now, having done this, then the next part is to find out the, the various efficiencies. And that is what we have. The main aim of doing this total analysis was to arrive at, to check various efficiencies, whether those efficiencies are reasonable or what are the upper limits of those efficiencies. All those things you have to, uh, you are interested in. To do that, this is the another uh, depiction of the same data, but drawn in a different manner. Now here, the same thing has been uh, redrawn by taking the, this as the, the starting point for every individual value at each section, how much is the, the total infiltrated water. We had found, found out that, that in the first case, this is 96, 97.5 millimeters and so on. So this gives you a depiction that how much is the total water which has been infiltrated at different stations. And this is the level, the actual soil moisture deficit level was in this particular case. We had mentioned in the beginning that 73.6 millimeters is the deficit which is prevailing in the field. That means you needed basically this much water. If you take the total length, then you needed up to this level, you needed the water. So all this amount is the water which is stored in the root zone. Any amount which is above this level is the water which has gone into the deep population, which has gone beyond the, the root zone depth. And if you decide that you will end this trip at 210 meters, then this will become the runoff component. Now this will be, there will be some, still some water which will be available and which will go as runoff. While finding out the, the efficiencies, there are different ways by which you can evaluate those efficiencies. One is that you can use these areas directly, as areas are depicting the volumes. So if you do that, you can find out the efficiencies using that or you can uh, use only the depth. You can, you can find the uh, the, the suitability of these different uh, ways or procedures and they are uh, they're not giving much different results. The results obtained are almost similar. So if we, we try to look at what are the various uh, values of these efficiencies, I will if we, if we note down the areas, the areas which are uh, observed, the total curve, under the total curve, the area is 33.2 units, okay. Either you can have a mesh or you can um, uh, use a, a transparent graph, anything you can do is, or a graph paper can be used to find out the unit areas and the unit can be, any unit is immaterial. The runoff is observed to be 3.7 7, uh, units, I will just say units and deep population as 9.2. The 
Jones Stewart and Ruth John as 20.3 units. Okay. Now using this, you can you can find out the various efficiencies which we have already discussed earlier. For example, if you want to find out the distribution efficiency, distribution efficiency in this case, well, let me also mention that another this uh, value 77.5 millimeters. This value is the, the minimum depth which has been observed up to this particular level. The minimum depth which has been uh, uh, noted down which is required for example in this case this is 77.5 millimeter is the depth required up to 210, uh, if you take the length of the border up to 210 meters only, then 77.5 is the minimum of the total. At every location, the minimum depth which is required is 77.5. So, with respect to that depth, if you have to achieve that, then you will have to provide some water which is and the, the stored in root zone will be more if you would have got more deficit. Okay. So, in other words, you can also say that the potential value of the, the efficiency, the application efficiency could have been slightly different if you did not decide to uh, irrigate the, the field at this soil moisture deficit level, if you would have allowed the, the, the soil deficit to increase to 77.5 mm, uh, millimeter depth, then it was possible to have, because in any case you are getting this much water throughout this uh, length. So, it was possible to achieve a higher efficiency and the area up to this level of 77.5 millimeters is that area is uh, between 77.5 and up to that 210 meters level. This area is 21.7. So, this gives you a a value which is achievable value and in that situation the distribution efficiency would have been 21.7 is the depth which is applied depth and the if you take care of the surface runoff you are left with this is the depth which is required this is the depth which is applied 33.7.2 uh, minus 3.7 which has gone as the runoff. So, if you multiply it by 100, this is 74 percent. So, the distribution efficiency can be worked out from here. Similarly, the application efficiency. on the basis of the, the actual, uh, actual case, actual SMD, the actual soil moisture deficit, this is basically 20.3 and uh, how much you have, the water you have applied, this, are, this works out to be 61 percent only. Whereas, the potential value of the application efficiency could 
have been. This could have been higher. This could have been 66 percent. Had you waited for some more time and had you let the soil moisture deficit go to that level. So that is where the management allowed uh, deficit comes into picture that if you if you can manage your irrigations in such a manner that you let the deficit which is reasonable deficit reach a, a level which is the optimum level, you will find that the efficiencies can be much better. Similarly, you can uh, find out the other uh, efficiencies which are uh, which we have already looked at and we also know the procedure how we can make use of those efficiencies. This is only one aspect which we have seen. Similarly, uh, in this particular case, now this is with respect to the stream size which is 33 liters per second. If you use a different stream size, you will find that all these quantities will change. So, in the evaluation procedure, your aim is to come out with those combination of parameters which give you the optimum efficiencies and that is only uh, possible if you analyze more number of uh, uh, these strips with variation in these parameters and is more of a trial and error procedure when you are doing the evaluation. Okay. With that, we will close this uh, chapter on the border irrigation system. If you have any question, you can ask.